So now that we've got it blocked in, that means we can start into our subtleties, you know, uh, and and shades and little details. Okay, so for ex for example, there's a kind of a a reddish darkish point at the at the tip of that that lemon. So red, bit of black, a bit of that lemon colour maybe. That give us a kind of a good dark red, but it's redder than even I have it there. Okay, let's put that in there. It's a little point there like that. Now, the around the dark the the background here, it's darker over here than it is over here, for example. Okay, so I think it's there's my shadow there. I'm gonna make it darker, a little bit of black, and redder is quite sort of reddish as it goes towards the back. A bit more black. Okay, so I'm going to put that in. That comes down there. And I'm not doing, um, I'm not tickling the paint on. I'm just putting in sort of uh, strokes. Decent strokes. I'm going to grab some of my shadowed area. It's my, my lemon in shadow colour. And I think that there's a a bit coming up there. And across there. And that here, that area there. I'm going to put a stroke in there. Okay. And maybe something like that. Right. So now we've got uh, some more descriptive shadows. Okay. Actually, there's one bit, bit I missed there, underneath there. Right. All right. So th that, that's why this blocking in stage is so important, all right? So you, you and, and uh, I mean, it, it all kind of comes together because you first of all, you've said, you set the tone by saying, okay, the brightest bright is there, the darkest dark is there. So you kind of think, okay, well, the, the tone I want here is about such and such a tone, okay? So you decide on that and then you block it in. So you, you've got, you've got about, I'd say you've got about 20% uh, leeway on this before it starts to, to, to really drastically change it. Changes that are too drastic will end up in mud. Say, for instance, let's take a lurid example and say that that, okay, we wanted to change that to a, a blue. Now I want a blue object. I didn't want a yellow object. I'm going to change it. It's going to be a blue lemon. And you tried to change that to a blue. Instant mud. Okay, it would just... The change is too radical and it, it will just mess the entire thing up. It'll turn into a mushy green colour. All right, so it's the same in in a kind of a more subtle way that if you try and make changes that are too radical, uh, even within yellows to that, so you, 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 you it will start to, to mess it up. So you, you try and get that block within 20% of where you want it to be and then you've got a bit of leeway because you don't want to be messing. People also overwork their, their uh, brush strokes as well. They start worrying the paint after putting it on. Uh, where you, you've got a few, you've got, a f you've only got a few opportunities to work in new paint into that. So you make sure that you work them in sort of uh, in a judicious way, if that makes sense. Yeah, the changes when they're radical, they'll, they'll, they'll turn to mud. Okay, and it's happened to me as well. <laughs> I've got a boot hill of failed paintings uh, to my name and the garage. I think I'll have a bonfire of the vanities one of these days. Right, so now we're going to work on, on the, the this part, the warm part, okay? And so I, I think it gets quite warm and red around here and around the back. I'm not quite sure why. But it's definitely there. It's warmer and slightly redder as it curves around away from us. So there's my lemon painting uh, paint, and I'm going to just add in a little bit of red to it. Just touch to see, to see where I get to. Make my changes incrementally. Okay. And I think it's warm across there. It's not a radical change now. It's very 
subtle. Coming there like that. There. There's strokes going down. I'm not sort of um, worrying the paint. I'm just putting the stroke down and then leaving it. Across there. Like that. <clears throat> now, as it comes this way, I think it gets cooler. Cooler and slightly darker here. Kind of greenish. Okay, so maybe I'll just grab some of that shadowed part. Mix a bit more yellow into it. I put this intermediate sort of uh, tone here. And here. And your touch, this is the other thing, is your brush strokes don't have to follow the form of your uh, the thing that you're painting. No, you're much better off by, by putting in strokes that are athwart the direction that you think they should be. Okay, so we've got that bit now. Okay, let's do something with the, the, the foreground. Because oil paintings, a la prima oil paintings especially, are all about painting the thing out in general tones as soon as you can. So you don't so you're not concentrating on any one area and finishing it and then moving on to the next one and then finishing that and you the whole thing is about making an obscure kind of uh painting and then bringing it forward to clarity as you uh as you progress through the painting so you don't just stick with the star of the show you've got to do the other stuff the supporting uh characters as well so we're, i'm going to move in here there what there's work to be done in this foreground so I'm going to grab some of that shadow of the foreground here. I, luckily, I made enough paint to uh, continue using it. And I know I can see that it's darker as it goes at the back there and comes down there like that. So shadow tone there. And across the back here, that's darker as well. So there, just putting in strokes here. Um, there, it's, it's gone very green now. That. That's no harm either. And here, as it's darker, as that sort of little bubble pokes out, it's dark as well. And here's an opportunity for me to get that paint and to sculpt that bubble into shape. And put in a cover some indications that there are undulations in the in the cloth, but not too much. Okay, so and around there that'd be darker as well. Right, so now I can move that, sculpt that there. Now I think that the the lemon has gone a bit banana shaped there, so I'm going to grab some lemon. I've still got the opportunity to be able to push that lemon out by using a decent amount of paint pushing that out there okay background what do I want to do I want that lemon to look bright so I, I think the tone is not too bad here but do I want it to be that bright or can I make it slightly more bluish if I make it more bluish that will that'll put the lemon out a little bit more it'll it'll help that lemon stand off because this won't be competing with that for warmth. Okay, so let's get a bit of blue and a bit of white. And maybe a bit of oil just to help it move around. Put that in in places there. Sculpt the lemon there. Sculpt the lemon down there as well, and here. Right, okay, that 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 that's okay for the moment. Now, I want to put in the darkest dark down here, okay? Because we started out as a kind of a very mid-tone uh, painting. We we started out mid-tone. We've slightly sort of 
widened the tone towards the brights and we've darkened the tone in, in the dark slightly but now we're going to put in the really dark dark okay so I'm going to make that by I think mixing the blue and the red and the yellow together see what I get that's very dark that's good it's dark and it's neat neat paint but I want to sort of make it tend towards blue a bit more put a bit more blue into it okay now I've got very dark dark there okay so let's have a look see how that goes in move that there like that push that up okay so it's starting to sort of become three-dimensional now I think so I need to do something up bouncing around we're bringing the whole painting forward I'm starting to say to myself hmm it could be slightly lighter in this area here maybe I went over the top with that stroke there so let's grab some of that dark that I made there and mix it in with the lemon color see what I get a kind of a an average of the two put that in there down there like that you can come all the way down grab my lemon in shadow again put that there and shape that a little bit more stroke there maybe a stroke even there of the shadowish color all right okay now the lights come here and it's bounced back up again to here so logically I suppose it must mean that if I mix that into my lemon color I might maybe into the shadow part of the lemon color I might get what I'm looking for. Let's have a look, see if that's light enough. Slightly lighter, I think. Makes a bit of uh, titanium white into it. Put that there like that. It's very subtle, it's very difficult to, to actually discern it once it goes on. There. That could be lighter, what I've done there. So I've got the opportunity of changing it. Okay. Now, I want to do something... <laughs> Just as much as this is reflecting that, that is reflecting this. So I, especially around here, you start to notice these things, and you start to notice them, you know, for one, because you're painting a lot, but two, it's because your analytical side, now that you know about the travel of light, is saying, well, okay, if there's a travel of light and that's bouncing off of, that's reflecting this, but what is that? Is that reflecting that then? And you you go looking for it, and then you say, okay, oh, well, yeah, I think I see it now. So it's a mixture of of your analytical skills, your painting skills, and also your art, your artist. Your painting skills aren't necessarily artistic but your artist will say well I want this to go in here that's what your uh, the inner artist will say okay well I don't see it even my analytical side can't see it but I want it to be in there because it'll actually see it'll help okay I, I can't tell you if it's gonna help we'll see won't we but uh, I say okay well I'm gonna grab some of my lemon and uh, actually do you know what it's probably very much like the mix I just made to reflect in the lemon I put that in there and I can shape my shadow a little bit more because of that, using that. Okay, so there's the the cloth is reflecting the lemon now, and it might be reflecting in undulations, not just in the you know uh, directly beneath it, because the cloth keeps turning towards us and, and moving away from us, doesn't it? Sort of as it's folding. All right, so now we've got that there. Can I do anything else? Yes, there are lighter parts of that. Uh, foreground so I'm going to mix some white into 
that maybe get a bit more blue in there but very light parts of that foreground and I can see them one here maybe I make it a bit brighter that's too bright pure pure white went in there yeah that's better and then there's folds coming in here don't no need to be too uh, descriptive about the folds it's nice to have the the, the strokes in there and once this uh, once this painting is done and that lemon's been taken down from the stand and squeezed into a uh, you know into a salad no one will ever know that it wasn't exactly the the, the shape that you've made so you're off the hook then although you know because you're here okay so now i've i've got so, for some strokes in there that kind of look a bit sort of pleasing you see because it's not the paint it's not it's not it's not that bloody lemon who gives a damn about that lemon it's just a lemon okay that's important the way you make that look okay so uh oh highlight of course highlight so see so there's my lemon color and now i've left myself room tonally for a bright highlight there if I'd painted that lemon too bright, the the highlight wouldn't have any impact. So just adding a little bit more, I think I'll add in a little bit more red into that, white. This is the other thing, a very, very important thing to say at this point. You cannot make that lemon color up with uh, white in it. What will happen is the whole thing will go pale and you don't want a pale lemon. You want a bright, uh, uh, you know, energetic uh, lemon. So what you do is you don't use white to make it brighter. If you wanted to make that a bit brighter, you put more yellow into it. Okay, because white is reserved for the highlight. Okay. So now we've got a highlight. So now the thing. Uh, hopefully you'll agree looks more three-dimensional all right so um now i said about that sort of get, getting that to be slightly brighter Can you just explain that bit about the white again? yeah you can't make a bright color brighter by putting white into it what, what you do is you make uh, a, a color paler it'll go pastel you know and you don't want that in in a bright color the, uh, this artist uh, I met once uh, s said to me, he says, white is not your friend. <laughs> People think that it's going to do something for them and it bloody, it does you in, you know, uh, you know it m messes you up. And uh, I, I thought that was a great phrase and I've been using it ever since. White is not your friend. <laughs> I creep up behind people in the art class no 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 white is not your friend uh, and it's, I can't be enigmatic like that artist I met was I, I, I then I'll just explain my kvetch all over them explaining why it's not your friend but I, I think some of these things have to be explained because you only uh, you know once once you get it you understand what the what somebody is saying uh, but if you if you if you haven't had it explained to you it's kind of like, what the flipping hell is he on about what is he on about indeed right so i've I've got that I, I just want to add in a little bit of yellow just to to actually follow what i was saying about uh, mixing the next brightest color up on the scale rather than white to make something brighter so i'm just doing that here so maybe this area here could be brighter so I've taken my lemon color and I've just mixed yellow into it, not white. The white's only in that spot, that hot spot. And still, you're you're not painting in the direction of things. Don't do it. You don't paint in the direction of things. You see these kind of swirly, <laughs> swirly sort of paintings. You 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 make it up as a kind of a a mix of ever s smaller dabs you know 
rather than um, you know rather than kind of a stripey painting. Now that's too too obvious, so I'm just going to I'm just going to push that in a little. Bit. Maybe I'll actually add in a little bit of my lemon colour into there just to take away. It was too harsh, too much there. But painting is all about making a mark and correcting it rather than getting the mark right first time. You can't do it. I can't do it. Most people can't do it. There's only a few people, I suppose, who are ever really able to do that. And how boring is that? It means you always have per perfect paintings. And we know from the art world that that's not the joy of painting, I don't think. It's not a joyful thing to have photographic paintings They've got to have life in them, and that means sort of mistakes and texture. So here, so now we, we're kind of almost uh, at the end of this in the sense that uh, um, I've, I think that's enough for for the strokes in here. Maybe I could just sort of, I, I'm just going to lose the, the hard edges here between those areas of uh, hue lose the hard edges all right and maybe yeah, a little bit that's it i'm not doing any more than that now there's a couple of uh, there's some devices that you should have in your armory of painting right and one of them is uh in order to make something look to, to actually come towards you warm colors come towards you now, people, I think, are, are just attracted to warm colours. So, you know, the warm colours come towards you. Cool colours recede. Okay, so if you've got shadows or areas of darkness or, or, or things that you don't want to be so obvious, you know, you can make them uh, cooler. Um, obviously, the other one is bright things come towards you and dark things recede. Now, hence all those Caravaggio-type sort of paintings, which are called chiaroscuro, paintings where everything is just dark and and then the the objects loom out of the darkness it's a way of creating depth uh, so we don't have so much depth of darkness here but we do in terms of temperature I've made it a little bit cooler and uh, it's dark enough to actually make that lemon come forward a bit I'm going to lose the edges oh well, that's the other thing um, hard edges come towards you and broken up sort of uh, blended ones recede Okay, so we've got all these hard edges down here, so I think I want to break them up. So I'm just going to lose the edges a little bit, but not too much. It's not going to be a, a blend fest. I'm just sort of moving that paint around. Okay, so that, that area is going to recede from us a little bit more. So, and this is another one here. I don't want those edges of that shadow to be so hard. I'm just breaking them up. The, the the lovely thing about oils is that you know, it remains malleable, remains removable. Uh, I think probably by tomorrow that would would be harder to do. But um, you know, if you've got hours of, of of playing with it, mind you, I wouldn't recommend doing that too much because that way you'll end up with mud as well. So also here's another thing: I don't want, I don't like those that hard area area between the horizon you know between the the background and the foreground so it's going to break that up as well break that up. just moving the paint into itself you know. is there anything else i want to do yes now uh, i'm reaching the end parts of this because i want to i want to sit this lemon in a pool of light and there's not enough light on the on the foreground so back to our front uh, our foreground okay so grab in some of that white and blue and maybe I'll put a bit of yellow into it because now I'm directing the the viewer's eye I want them to to be, be viewing around here that's all irrelevant only as uh, in as much as it's supporting this okay so let's have a look see what I can I can do I want to sit that so it's going to be bright around that here and then it's going to could it get slightly darker as it hits the edges of the canvas it's your job to to 
guide your your viewer where you want them to to see there Now, I think that that could be darker there in that shadow a little bit, and also darker, and there's more, you can see the lemon reflecting in that shadow. I don't want to do too much, um, maybe in here. That dark, let's see what that does. I don't want to make too much of that sort of double shadow either. I'm just not interested in, in having it there like that. But that, that could be joined up with the background. What happens in a painting is you get to this stage. In fact, you stop looking at the, at the model, at the subject, and you just make this what you want it to be. I think that I'm not far off the end of it now. I'm only sort of um, mooching around this painting, sort of uh, uh, making sort of little tiny detailed sort of uh, uh, not even strokes really. I'm, I'm pushing the paint around that I have already on there. So I think that really kind of brings it to the 